Once you have placed your objects on your on your printing bed where you want to print them and how many, you can go to the slicer tab. What the slicer does is it calculates how to print those models that you've placed on your on your printing bed. So you can select the, the slicer that you, you want to use and there are settings below that where you can choose what material you are printing. Um, at what layer thickness and so on. If you want to change those settings you can click on the configuration icon and that will open a, me uh, a menu where you can get access to all those settings. You will see that this is not the one size uh, fits all solution. You can alter those settings depending on what you, you want to print. The settings that we've provided is for normal printing that, that that we are using and that should get you get you started. So once you've chosen your your print settings you can click with on the, the slice button at the top. Once you've done that it will, will calculate how to print the model and when it's done it will automatically go to the preview tab at the top. So then it will show you exactly how the, the model will be printed. So you can see the layers in which the model will be, will be printed. This is nice for, for debugging if you have quite difficult objects that you want to print and you want to get an idea how the, how the printer will interpret those, those models before you, you print it. It will also state the, more or less the time it will take to print the, the model and also the, the length of filament needed for this print. Before we start printing we need to make sure that the height of our z-axis is, is correct. So we will home the z-axis and see where it, it stops, where it sees it as it's, as it's zero. So we've done our bed leveling, so we know that the nozzle will move perpendicular, uh, um, parallel to the, the heated bed. But when we own our z-axis, we need to make sure that it's just touching the, the glass bed when it reaches the, the zero. If it does not, we need to adjust the this, this screw so that it, it, makes, it just touches it when, it, when it's zero. This, that's a good starting point. Once we start printing, we'll be able to see if we need to adjust it further or not. Once it's set up, it shouldn't be necessary to adjust it before every print. While we're waiting for the heated bed to, to reach its temperature, um, I can maybe also mention if you want to do offline printing and you have the LCD screen, then what it means is you can print without uh, the uh, uh, PC. So if you want to, if you have a PC standing somewhere else or your printer is not standing next to your PC or you have a couple of printers that you want to run simultaneously then it's a, a good option and then you'll use this the dial on the screen to go to the menu. So you can press it and you can turn it and there's different options there. Under the prepare you can move the axis, you can preheat, do preheat, the settings for that is set in the in the firmware. Under control you can for instance set the temperature and then the last one is print from SD card. So that works is you put the SD card, you connect it to your to your PC, you generate the, the code to print, uh, it's called G code then you copy the G code to the SD card and you plug it into your printer and then you can access the, the SD card information um, on, the, on the menu and you just press on the, on the file that you, that you want to print and then it will start to execute it exactly the same as if it's connected to a PC. If you want to have your heated bed heat up quicker, you can put some tin foil 
uh, on top of it. Just remember to remove it before you start your, your print because most of the heat goes through the glass to the environment. The bottom is, is quite well insulated with the ceramic fiber paper at the bottom. So if you, if you put the, the tin foil on at the, the top, then you layer the heated bed in and it will reach the temperature a lot quicker than, than without it. Another thing that makes a difference is if you are in an environment where there is quite a lot of airflow. So if you are in a, in a room that is if, and the windows are closed, then um, it's better. But if there is more airflow, then it will also take longer to heat up. Okay, so now that our heated bed is very close to the, the set temperature, in Repetia Host we can click on the Start Print button. It's the fourth icon from the left hand side at the top of your screen. Okay, so now the extruder is just about to, to reach its set temperature. And the heated bed is also at the set temperature. So as soon as the temperature stabilizes, then it will continue with the printing process. When it starts at first, there will there is no plastic that comes at the bottom. It will take a moment for the plastic to to come out the from the nozzle and. That basically primes the 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 hot end. So you'll see that it it prints a skirt around the the model, and that's basically to just get the plastic flowing before it starts with the actual print. Your first layer should squash a little bit into the into the printing bed. So it shouldn't be too much that the plastic cannot get out of the bottom, but it shouldn't it should be less than your layer height should be less than the layer height that you've selected. Now at this point you can just leave it that it that it continues. It will go through all the layers and when it's finished it will shut off the heated bed and it will shut off the the hot end and then it will uh, as soon as the hot end is cool it will um, the, the parts will easily come off the, the heated bed due to the temperature difference and then when it's done you have your printed part